Welcome to the hot sauce. This is Angel Planels, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 179 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platform. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Monique Richard, a fellow registered dietitian nutritionist and national media spokesperson that resides in Johnson City, Tennessee. So, welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Uh, today, we have a good friend and fellow media spokesperson, Monique Richard. Um, we're going to go ahead and put her in the hot seat here so she gets the big screen. Woo-hoo! All right, so hopefully you're okay. And let's go ahead and why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us about your journey into the profession, what's inspired you to join the profession, where you went to school, internship, all that. The floor is yours. Let's hear it. All right. Well, first, Angel, I have to ask you, do people say to you, um, can I sing, just call me angel of a morning? Do people ask you that all the time? Because that's what I want to say uh, to you. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that. I haven't been sung to before, so I appreciate that. I've been like, oh, can I check your shirt to see if you were made in heaven or all these things. So. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I think that's like an 80s or 90s song, right? Madonna yes, or something? Yeah. Anyway. Yes. All right. So, uh, hi, everyone. Monique here. I... Uh, let's see, where do we start? Um, my journey as a dietitian began with a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Um, basically, I was diagnosed in my 20s, so this is kind of my second career. Um, prevalence in my family of diabetes is very, very high. My mom has type 1, my grandmother has type 1, my brother has type 1. We're all anomalies, nobody can figure us out. Um, And so I was diagnosed and basically because it was so well managed in my family, it wasn't talked about. So um, we didn't have insurance growing up. So um, I probably had it for 10 years before I even knew. So, um, you know, we can talk about all that probably another time, but it was uh, a rough road to get to the diagnosis. But the doctor basically just kind of threw a prescription at me, sent me on my way and had said, figure it out by yourself. And so it was extremely overwhelming and um, devastating and traumatic. And um, I started reading books and I started trying to figure out what is this chronic condition? What is this disease? um, And how do I manage it without tons of medication and, you know, all of that. Um, And the books that I was reading were either by dietitians or mentioned working with registered dietitian nutritionists. And I said to myself, I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to be one of those people that sit on the other side of the desk and empower you to make changes, to educate you and not just throw something at you and say, figure it out yourself. So that is um, kind of where it all began. And I haven't looked back since. So just figuring out what a carbohydrate was, was on me. And um My A1C was 11.4 at the time. So if any of you know, I mean, all of you dietitians know, but any of you listening out there, layman, that's a very, very uncontrolled blood sugar in dangerously high levels. Um, And as a result of that, I could have gone blind. I had retinopathy because I had it for so long and then I didn't know. So um, I started seeing some flex in my my eye sight and um, investigated and it was retinopathy because of the uncontrolled blood sugar for so long and i had to have laser and needles in my eyes and all the nightmarish things that go along with treatment and uh, the doctor said that i could have gone blind in two years if i hadn't caught it so my journey has been um traumatic at times and overwhelming But at the same time, it gave me that passion with a purpose and it gave me that mission to help others because I knew I needed to be the practitioner that I needed at the time that nobody was recommending to me. So in a nutshell, that is my story of becoming a dietitian. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, that I I mean, who who knows? And yes, 11.4, that's pretty, it's pretty, pretty high. I have seen some higher, but... You know, it's like, uh, I guess, would you describe it as like, uh, not honey thick blood, but pretty, pretty thick, pretty thick when it comes to the blood uh, consistency. Yep. So then, 
Yeah, the body's not working efficiently. Well, so did you, so you were in college when you got your initial diagnosis. What were you, what were you majoring in at the time? So I actually started out, um, went to Hawaii for college because I'm from Vermont and why not go as far away as possible, right? <laughs> so <laughs> Hawaii, yeah. So I went to Hawaii originally for child psychology. And so an 18 year old going, you know, thousands of miles away from home, paying for college by myself, all kinds of loans, figuring stuff out by myself. Um, it was overwhelming for an 18 year old to be told that you have to be in school for 10 years. I, I remember this moment very vividly. I went to a symposium talking about doctoral program, psychology, the psychology program itself. And basically they're like, yeah, you need to be in school for, it's going to take about 10 years to get your doctorate and uh -huh. practice child psychology. And <laughs> mind blown. Like I, I just at 18, I was just like, I can't fathom being in school for that long, uh, paying that much, like all, all of it was just overwhelming and I just said, no, <laughs> I just want to work. I just want to go back home. Um, so about a, after a year and a half and island fever is real. <laughs> love, love, love Hawaii, but it's real, especially if you are used to getting in your car and driving from state to state, seeing the beautiful mountains. You're around the island in about six hours. So, so anyway, I went back home and I just started working. I went back to serving and I went back to, I did all kinds of things in retail management, consumer finance, all kinds of things. So when I was diagnosed, I was just job hopping, really. I didn't really have a career. So what I did was I switched my psychology um, credits to a minor. So I have a minor in psychology, which has helped me tremendously. Okay, so cool. I went to, awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Good, yeah, I was about to say, so you, were you still at University of Hawaii when you switched or did you end up uh, going back to the States? What happened? Good question. So I actually went to Hawaii Pacific University as a private college, but um, but went back to Vermont, worked, and then um, when I was diagnosed, we actually lived in Nashville. I've got my little Nashville charm on, um, sending prayers and love to everyone that's um, that's in that area right now for what's going on. Um, but I, we were actually in Nashville, and um, so I looked at Middle Tennessee State University was the closest university that had a dietetics program was about 20, 30 minutes away from where I lived, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So um, I went and visited the campus and um, went to the, the chair of the department, Dr. Lisa Sheehan Smith uh, at the time and advisor and told her, you know, this is what I'm thinking. Tell me more. What is an RDN? What is an LDN? What does it all mean? What do I have to do? And she gave me all the information. And um, so I went back to school that following fall and um, did all did all the requirements and, and did it all and did the practicum and and did the path like everyone else applied for the internships and I ended up getting a coordinated internship and master's program at East Tennessee State University where I'm at now in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's about five hours um, east of Nashville. So we're the east end of the state towards North Carolina. So that's where I am now. Awesome. Awesome. And so you got your, you did your internship, you got the RD. What to have your uh, what have you done for your jobs since you've yeah, been a dietitian? I have had some fabulous experiences, even starting in undergrad. Um, in undergrad, I, you know, my passion and my mission and my commitment was so different at that time, at that age, at that stage in my life. I was so determined and I was so focused because I had just gone through a really traumatic experience. It took me about two years to figure out my medication, to get everything kind of working for me. Um, and so I was really laser focused. And so school was so easy for me because I was just in a different mindset. And, and you hear that a lot with kind of some older students. They're just in a different place. Um, I was always a good student, but I, I just, I, sh everything was just more important. And I just shot to the top for everything. And so I did some, had some great experiences in undergrad. Um, just 
wanted to do everything and wanted to be a really uh, a holistic part of everything. And so went to Egypt in 2009 with, I have a good friend that's from there. And we presented to an elementary school on nutrition. Um, I got started to get involved with the international affiliate of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics as a student and went um, with them to India at the time. And they created a position for me as a student outreach chair. Um, so I had all of these amazing, amazing experience, went to Israel. I became part of the, the McNair Scholar um, program. And through that, I, I presented research in China and we went to India again. And it, I mean, just incredible, incredible experiences. So because of those experiences, um, that that allowed me to take, take on leadership roles later on in my career and um, we can certainly talk about that a little bit later, but when I went to ETSU, um, they allowed me to skip my local rotation in diabetes and go to India again because I was participating in a, a conference there, um, and so I did my rotation there. Um, so I've had some incredible, incredible experiences. And then as far as a job, um, one of my first jobs was for corporate wellness when I graduated and uh, received my registration registered dietitian credential. And then I went into, I started my private practice pretty early on when I became an RDN and that has been going since. So I've, um, it'll be nine years this year and I've been in clinical. So I've worked at a local um, outpatient primary care facility for about six years. Um, I've done a bunch of things on the side as far as writing menus, um, contributing to books, um, some adjunct faculty teaching. So lots and lots of different eclectic things, but all super passionate and fun. Awesome. No, I, I appreciate hearing hearing everyone's journey and this has been a very, a roller very coaster. interesting, very <laughs> unique. Yeah, yeah, it's been a roller coaster. No, no, I love it. And, and especially the fact that you've dabbled into a bunch of different areas through your volunteering, you've been allowed to experience some cool, unique things that many people may not get to experience. And no, that's pretty sweet. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing. I am, um, I greatly respect everyone and their journey. And I think it's awesome to hear, you know, you just personalize yourself to me and I much respect for that. That's awesome. So next question for you is you know you've been a media spokesperson and, and you actually done media before you've been a media spokesperson what have you found to be the most enlightening and the most humbling aspect of doing the media or being a part of the media definitely the the consistent art of being concise we have so much to say and we know so many different things that it's difficult to wrap that all in a sound bite or in the time that you're allotted uh, to explain something and i think we talk a lot about this in training that the generalizations that we have to make we know that it's such a it, nutrition is such a highly unique individualized need right but when you talk to wide audiences, you have to do a lot of generalizations. And so that is really, really tricky. Um, or do a lot of qualifiers, <laughs> which often you don't have a lot of time for. Um, and so we tend to be safe. We tend to say everyone needs more fruits and vegetables or water or things like that because we want to be sure that we're not... Um, you know, getting a message across that someone, you know, that doesn't need that certain thing or needs it and then takes it too far or something like that. Um, so that has been, that's a constant, that's a constant work in progress. Um, and fighting for those segments that are longer or those, you know, reporters that understand a little bit more about context in what we do. Absolutely. No, that's, uh, yeah, it's like you're trying to, <laughs> you don't want to go over people's head. You don't want right. to do beneath them, kind of right. hit them in the forehead, make sure they totally understand it. And at the same time, uh, take the linguistics down. So it's not speaking to our common folk. We're kind of speaking to everybody. And right. yeah, it is a, it's an art and a science. We got to deliver yeah. the science in an artful way that, and yep. uh, yeah, some people like Leslie Bonsi, you know, they do it as a, it's like an art form. It's like, you know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> those things I'm like, 
It's like, what? No, yeah. No, that's great. So. And sometimes it just comes out, right? Because we're, if you do it more and our personalities, sometimes it just comes out and it just clicks. You know, the one, the one I did the other day, um, she was, you know, I did aquafaba, a demonstration on aquafaba and the, the co-host was like, oh my gosh, that, you know, just blew my mind. How does that happen? And I said, it's food science, baby. And, you know, it just right. like one of the, the news anchors came out after that. And he was like, that was the best part of the show. He's like, it's food science, baby. <laughs> and so sometimes things just stick and you get people with that levity and you get people um, just more curious about what you're talking about and what you're doing. And it, that just comes with us being humans and chatting with each other. And that's, that's the fun part about it for sure. Yes. Well, you are charismatic like me. So I think that that makes it easy <laughs> that we're able to deliver the message with a smile. Uh, you know, you're, you're in Tennessee. I thought you were a Southerner. So then, and you do have some, every once in a while, you can hear a couple of things that come across yeah, a little Southern. I know for me, people are like, ooh, and I've lived, you know, I'm from New Orleans. I've lived in New York City. I've, right. I've lived in Seattle now for, well, this is 12 years now, but everyone's like, what? <laughs> Cement? Concrete? <laughs> what? <laughs> Cement, and I was like, oh, yeah. you can, you can, you can. You could take the boy out of New Orleans, but you can't take the New Orleans out of the boy. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so here's a question. If you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? And I, and I always put this question in there and, and people, um, yeah, I know for the most part, all our journeys are unique. So, you know, don't worry about whatever what um yeah what, what would you change and, and what would you keep the same that is a tricky question somebody asked me that the other day and i said i just don't like that question because i just don't <laughs> think that way and i think because of my journey the there was no looking back like things happen the way that they happen and the way that they needed to happen so i think you just i don't necessarily like to think that way but there are a couple of things that you know if you would go back and just tweak a little bit i would think that what comes up for me is um, i did a thesis in a non-thesis program in my graduate school and um, just because i didn't know if i wanted to teach i didn't know if i wanted to do more research i always wanted to be one step ahead i knew i wanted a master's in undergraduate long before it was going to be required and um, because I just wanted to be one step ahead. If I was going for it, I was going for it all the way. And so I did a thesis in a non-thesis program, which was fine. I had a great team and great mentors, but there was also, there was a lot going on. She had, there was a lot that my team had on their plate. So I feel like I wasn't, um, I didn't get everything that I needed out of it to possibly get all the value out of doing all that extra work. And I certainly take my responsibility. Maybe I didn't ask the right questions or um, I'm not sure. Like there's so much that you can't control and you don't know, but that maybe is something right. that I, I think about and I'm like, Ooh, if I would have been better at statistics or if I would have been better at this or better at that, I could have done that. That's maybe the, the only thing that kind of comes up for me. But again, I just, I try to say, well, I did what I did and what happened happened and um, you just keep going, going forward. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, some people are like, I don't change a thing. <laughs> you know, some people are like, hey, we could have done this, we've done that. But it's always, I, you know, I think, um, you know, as I mentioned before, we jumped on the podcast, the main purpose is to try to speak to interns and speak to young up and coming mm -hmm. dietitians because yep. they're trying to figure out their journey. So if we can impart any wisdom on people, it's always great to see. And I, I know, you know, we feel young, we feel invincible. You could do anything you want. And of course, everybody's attentions are scattered. So, you know, people can hear what people go through. It, it doesn't seem so foreign to them as they experience as they get older. So, so thank you for that. No problem there. Mm -hmm. So what does the future hold for you? What are you, what are you thinking here? Oh, good question. I can't give you all the secrets of the secret sauce, hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, con it's this continued journey that I hope that we have in commonality, it sounds like, you know, in all of us, all of us spokespeople and all of us dietitians that are just dabbling in lots of things, it's just to have fun. It's a serious subject, what we do, and we can certainly be serious when we need to, but also we can be very fun and, you know, eating should be enjoyable and food should not be overwhelming and, um, you know, taking care of ourselves should be more second nature. And so it's all of these things that, that make us just excited about life. And so who knows, like, I, I hope to write books and I hope to, there's just so much that I hope to do. And I'm a registered yoga teacher too. So I just, I have so many things that worked for me in my life in terms of just health and um, wellness and thriving that I want to impart and empower that, uh, empower others to take control of that and to manage that. And it's really difficult, especially in the environment that we live in now with things being so volatile and unstable, but I want people to know you can do it. Like there are so many things within your control. Yeah, there's a lot we can't control, um, but there are so many things within our control. And um, so yeah, take it, look at the seriousness of it and then say, okay, you know, I, these are the things that I can do. So empowering people for sure. Definitely. I, I'm a big, big advocate for, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's like a chip on your shoulder. You know, people tell you, no, you can't do this. And it's like, I'm going to show you. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> show yep. you. I'm going to show you. And then the next thing you know, it's like, oh, wow, you did it. And, you know, and I think the thing is, is life works in mysterious ways. We, uh, you know, I always like to tell people, kind of like moving away from home. You moved away from home for, for school. You know, the world's a big, scary place, and you can always move back home. Yep. We all have our niche areas or the areas we feel comfortable in, but it's good to dabble in everything. If anything, yep. it shows you what... Um, it shows you your strengths, your weaknesses. It kind of reveals your insecurities, and then it's a good opportunity for you to overcome them. And yes. I think the I was having a conversation with my son the other day about this, where um, he decided to play middle school soccer, and he hasn't played soccer in like six years. And I was like, "Well," and he's like, "Well, everybody's better than me," and all this. And I was like, "Hey, you know what? Like." You know, anybody who puts in the time and works on the craft will will always be better than someone who doesn't. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that, you know, it's not about how you compare to other people. It's how you compare to yourself. And mm -hmm. you need to look at yourself and figure out, like, what can I do to be better every day? And whether it's media, whether it's clinical, whether it's um, <clears throat> working with a diabetic patient, working with a renal patient, working with an older patient, working with an athlete, it's like, you know, you need to try to evolve it doesn't matter like you know some people we all well, social media is one of these dangerous things where you look at people and they're like oh this person's amazing they're doing these great things and uh, people don't see the blood sweat and tears that mm -hmm. a lot of us put in staying up late waking up early um mm -hmm. you know we could be netflixing and chilling instead you're <laughs> reading a book or doing all these things right. and then you know it's like oh why is why is monique on tv why is, yep. you know, why is so-and-so doing this or doing that? And it's like, well, yep. you know, we, we, we've put in the time, we've, we've done the effort, uh, right. and, and here we are. So no, I, I think it's good you, you say that. And I, I agree. It's definitely one of these things that people, it's easy to be comfortable. We have to kind of right. step right. out of our comfort zone because that, that's where we grow. Cause otherwise, right. and I've, I, I think I chatted with somebody about this the other day, they've been, uh, cardiac dietitian for like 43 years i just okay. had my birthday yesterday right so it's one of these yes, they've been the happy same birthday. Role. <laughs> thank you thank you but they've done the same role and the same thing and, yep. and they're totally yep. content and i like to dabble in everything i think teaching would be cool um yep. you know writing a book i don't know if anybody wants to read a book by me but it would be fascinating <laughs> i you know whatever i don't care yeah this podcast has been fun and putting yeah. videos together has been fun it's just a learning and evolving. So yeah. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. So I could chat with you all day. You know, I love hearing what you got to say. So the final yeah. question for you is, do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? 
Yeah, piggybacking off of what you said, um, you know that quote, go the extra mile, it's not crowded? Uh, like, go, put in the effort. And when you spend time investing in yourself and trying to figure out, when you're trying to improve yourself, you spend so much time that you can't be, you know, bothered with the noise and un like learning about what 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 is somebody else doing or what are they doing or why they're doing, you know, bring it back to yourself. When you're trying to improve yourself, then that's going to automatically come out in all of the opportunities that are going to come to you because you are working on getting better, um, being a better human, being a better professional, whatever that is. So concentrate on yourself and try not to waste too much time about what other people are doing. Um, because that's just a futile effort, right? So go the extra mile, participate, do less of this and more of this, <laughs> like get out there, right? Get out there in the world. I cannot emphasize this enough. Like my, my just passion for wanting to travel and wanting to just be out in the world was because I just can't get enough of it. Like I just love, there's just so much magic out there. And when you stop and think about, you know, look at being like the wonder of a child, right? That innocent wonder and wonder um, as a child has. Keep that because there's so much magic out there, but you have to be willing to open your eyes and look for it and feel it. Um, so, you know, curious inquiry is, is magical. Um, ask questions, but do it in a way that's like, how is it going to help me to know this information or help others? Do it in a way that's kind and not critical. Um, and then don't lose yourself, right? If you take a job or if you're in the internship and you're, you know, I was in um, a job for, for a while and I just started losing my passion and who I was. And that's wonderful for certain people to be in a career for 30 or 40 years, but you have to ask yourself along the way, have you given up something? Have you lost that internal fire? That's really, really important to check in with yourself and don't be complacent and don't be the dietitians that maybe some people go to and they regret going to that dietitian because the dietitian was maybe burnt out, didn't care anymore, didn't have the current knowledge, um, was just lackadaisical. You know, we don't want that. <laughs> so, I mean, who wants to go to any professional that's like that, right? If you go to your cardiologist or go to somewhere and they're just like, I don't know, we don't know. You can go, you can try this, you can do that. Like, come on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, don't lose yourself. And there's always fine. There's always ways to find that spark and keep the fire. Awesome. Well, with that being said, thank you very much for being a part of the hot sauce. I appreciate you and your journey. And Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. It's me. Your greatest gift if you are watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you are listening on a podcast platform, please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.